like what we were talking about. Everybody sets their goals high, and look what happens. This isn't just ours. This is everybody's. This is everybody's. This is what you need, Ted DiBiase. You need a little bit of family. That's what we are. When we get together, we get people's taking together. This is not the million dollar belt. This is the Hulkamaniac belt. This is not purchased. These belts, this Hulkamaniac team can't be bought. You gotta fight, kick, and grind for it. And Hulk Hogan, <laughs> we are gonna fight, kick, and grind for you all the way. You know something, multi-million dollar man? Now that we're winding down to the Survivor Series, now that it's not that far off, I really like the fact that you're being backed into a corner by your own team. These guys aren't a bunch of has-beens like you tried to drill into the powers of pain's mind. These are the best in the world, brother. These are the best in what they do. These are the WWF Tag Team Champions, number one. I'm glad you had to cut an extra check to the powers of pain. And as far as Jake the Snake's DDT stretcher service, arenas all around the country, multi-million dollar man, his opponents are getting that long, slow ride in that rolling coffin. As the ambulance wheels out of the arenas, as the red lights come on, I can't help but think you're going to be the next victim of the DDT. Zeus, you're mine. Jake the Snake, how are you going to get him in the, the bottom DDT? bottom line is this, my a man, a man is dying of thirst, has to have water. A dog that's starving has to have food. A child that's crying has got to have some attention. I have got to have you, Ted DiBiase. You know, we all have our needs. We all have our wants. But one thing I know, multi-million dollar man, winding down into this thing, you're going to be on the phone. You're going to try to get a hold of Jake the Snake. You're going to try to get a hold of Demolition. Nobody here sells out. We live by the demandments. Vocabulary too. All the hits in the distant distance is all brand new. It's true. I'm in the planetary and like Doctor Who. So who? Fuck your beat. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. Recording live from somewhere. Uh, it is Ringtime Pro Wrestling. Back at it again. It's Keith and Keisha in the building. Yes, Keisha has made it back home to the reservation. Keisha, say hi to the people. Mm -hmm. Look, this night shift is killing me, y'all. I can't take it. Like, I did this for five years, and I still, I'm telling y'all, this is not, I'm not, mm -mm. They need to put me back on days. I can't do this no more. Like, well, June ain't coming fast enough. I'm not, I just... I can't deal. Y'all save me. Please. <laughs> Just why? So, uh, we are kicking this off this weekend. Uh, we are basically coming back on the heels of four wonderful WWE shows that took place in New Orleans. Also, a weekend full of wrestling. Uh, stuff that happened with Impact Wrestling. And uh, Lucha Underground down there in the wonderful world of New Orleans. Uh, ROH had a very good show down there this week in New Orleans. Um, the wrestling calendar is now reset. This is the new year. Uh, new Japan had already kind of been off into their own new year. So now everything is caught up. Uh, Kish, the 2018 Horizon, how do you feel about it? I'm sorry, what? How do you feel about the 2018 horizon of wrestling? Like, where where are we going in the world of professional wrestling this year? Well, um, I can tell you NXT is doing an amazing job. Like, they're definitely going places. Um, uh, Raw and SmackDown are, are, are they're improving. Uh, somewhat all over the place, but I think they're starting to tighten that up a little bit. Uh, especially after this weekend, I can see like this is going to be it's going to be a little different, you know what I'm saying? But um, I think that it's going in a great direction right now. A WrestleMania always changes things. Um, I think WrestleMania weekend 
um, for not just for the WWE, but for wrestling as a whole, always changes things. They're always it brings this climax kind of uh, feel to wrestling during the year because you know, in my mind, everybody always works up until you know the next WrestleMania. It's not. I mean, granted, they have the other three major pay-per-views and then pay-per-views in between. And then they're fine and they're cool and they're all that. You know, Survivor Series is usually awesome. SummerSlam has hits and misses. You know, uh, Royal Rumble, of course, is its own entity. But when it comes to WrestleMania, like, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother time. It's a whole nother period. It's, it's just different. So... Even with the indies like ROH and you know Dragon Gate and everything, like they they work up for this weekend because of course you know this is like huge, it's huge. Like this is um, the best time for them to, to showcase their skills not only to uh, the top company but of course like the world. Like everybody gets to fix it. You know WrestleMania weekends always jam packed with like events all week long. It's it's not just that one day and that's it. So um, I feel like wrestling right now as a whole is definitely, it, it's pretty awesome right now. Um, I think uh, some people, of course, will disagree. Um, uh, there, there's places in, in it. Of course, every, uh, every storyline is not a good one. Um, sometimes creative just, just drops the ball entirely. Um, but I would say that they have been doing a good job so far, as far as like right now goes, especially with the Raw and SmackDown after WrestleMania. I thought were pretty awesome. So, um, but we all know we'll talk about that later. So right now, I think that wrestling is going. I think everything is is pretty good right now. Like I don't have any, I don't have any like real complaints. Of course, you know there are things I don't like, but um, it's not that 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 much at this point. Like I'm, I'm not at a point right now where I'm like, yeah, this is totally fucked up. Like, I'm not, I really don't feel that way at this point. So, so I think that's my take on everything. Okay. I uh, just wanted to get your opinion. Uh, here we go. Here's what I say. I'm always excited around this time of year. I'm always excited for the possibilities. Um, New Japan is doing great things. ROH is doing great things. NXT, so we are at the 2018 class of NXT. Uh, this the class that's moved on. I'm happy for them. Uh, more call-ups probably will be done during the Superstar Shakeup, but uh, we're starting to move on people to the main roster, and now it's going to be time for this crop of stars to really shine. Uh, the Bianca Blairs of the world. I think she showed she's ready for prime time this weekend. And you're going to see a lot more of her this year. Right? right. Uh, somebody we saw in the May Young Classic, but we didn't, hadn't really see much more of, you know, just here and there. But you're definitely going to see a lot more of her this year. Right? Um, the Street Profits. Are they ready to go to the next step? You know, they were, they were a good tag team all year long. But hey, now, there's another level. Are we gonna get those belts? Are we gonna do that? Uh, the right. fight, the fighting ushers. Who knew that there was like some twin ushers in NXT? And I, for, I forgot their real name. I was just like, yo, they just gonna be the fighting ushers. Right. But uh, and for those who are familiar with that, if you go to our Facebook page and look at the pictures, uh, there's a tag team that somehow I guess Usher got with Hulk Hogan and made two babies. So, yeah, that's happening. Who else is? Uh, the Undisputed Era, which now contains Rock. Well, it's not really a spoiler, and I'm going, we're going to talk about the NXT TakeOver because, I mean, it's been a week, right? Like in wrestling right. world, that's like with a movie, they'd be like, spoiler alert. Hey, man, the movie been out two months. Ain't no more spoiler alert. We talking about it. Get your ass to the right. movies. So, that's how we're going to do it. Take over. Look, I ain't no more spoiler after a week. Right? Wrestling moves kind of fast. But the Undisputed Era, as it stands now, uh, I saw a picture with them and Triple H and I thought about this. I'm like, wrestling needs a good click. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when I say wrestling, I'm going to say WWF in particular, or WWE for you new school people. In particular, needs a good click. We haven't had a good faction in a while, and I mean a really good one. Not the authority, not something with authority figures and executives, not something with some old people who try to get some shine. I'm talking about some good heels out here, running rough shot, and trying to take all the belts. Uh, I appreciate the work that was put in by that group. There was a level of brutality that had to be sustained to make it work. But let's see how they try to take over NXT. Uh, EC3, the EC3 era. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see how long he even lasts at NXT. Like, he, he strikes... I mean, because you, you can look at him. This guy ain't go. How did Cornette say this about Batista? This guy ain't going to be taking arm drags in the opening match. Right. Like, he was brought here to get to the main event. So, I don't know how long he'll be here. But, let's see. Ricochet is another one. Like, I think. Let's, let's see. Uh, I will go with spoiler alert on this one. Because I've just seen the pictures... I think his first major feud could be with Velveteen Dream. What? I don't know. I'm just saying this is like based on some pictures and some leaks. Basically, as some tapings, they show him and Velveteen having some words and some things going on. So I don't know what that means, but the idea of it is crazy. Um, I. I don't know if I would want them facing off too early against each other, but hey, if not, why not, right? Uh, speaking of which, Velveteen Dream, I mean, sky's the limit for the young man, Patrick. Uh, I had posted a joke during NXT TakeOver. I was like, hey, y'all remember Tough Enough? You remember that dude who was telling y'all how he was better than everybody else on the show and they all sucked? Yeah, yeah, he was right. <laughs> right. Because think about it. None of them dudes are even, even the dude who would. They, they ain't around. Like, right. exactly. he, he, Patrick was right the whole time. Like, hey, because even I thought he might be slightly obnoxious, but they were assholes. They were just a bunch of big dudes who was there because they were big, failed athletes and other stuff. Because it was like, oh, I, well, I played basketball. Oh, I played football. Oh, yeah, you failed. Right, because if you were if you was any good, you'd be in the pros and those, and you, you did you didn't make it. So you tried to come here, and you didn't take wrestling seriously. Patrick was a lifelong wrestling fan who took wrestling seriously and understood the history, and understood what it took to make it. He even understood the era and the transition and the changes that was being made in the business. Uh, hits the Keith Ho article from. Uh, 2012, the WWE's do a style change. Uh, which that style change, I think, is 100% complete. Even though it still has a lot of elements of its old school uh, feel. Patrick was, was, on, was on the cusp of it. It was understood because he was somebody who watched wrestling and understood where it was going. Uh, and here we are. And he found a character that I I don't know if I was on board with in the beginning. But after watching it, it was like, oh. Oh. What? Th- this dude is going to put this in a box and make it work. I, um, the first time that I seen it, I was taken off guard by it. Um, I really was, but I grew to instantly love it. Like it was, I, 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 it took no time for me to, to like, it, there was no period of, oh, this got to grow on me. Like, no, I, I was all for it immediately. Um, because I felt once I seen how Patrick was working this entire character, like I was like, oh, he got this in the bag. That's it for him. This is what's going to make him big. Like it wasn't, it was a question of like, my, I have to wonder, like, who created this character for him? Like, did he come up this with this himself, or did he was it WWE that kind of like handed this to him? Like, oh, this is what we want you to do. Either way it goes, um, I feel like he has put his everything into being Double Team Dream, and 
it is amazing because it's not just the character like you know the personality behind the character like Patrick can fucking wrestle like this is not um I think that stuff that was the misconception at first it's like oh yeah you gonna see him it's like no I you know it's crazy um I've heard comparisons of him to Goldust yeah and and I see it though like it's it's I, like, our, our early goal does yeah I see it it's like it's just not as flamboyant in my, in my opinion you know what I'm saying like he he ain't doing as much as goal does did but at the same time it's like the comparisons are are uncanny like you can see it it's 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 necessary you know it's I, and I I definitely um can understand why uh, they, everybody makes those comparisons and I also can understand why Double T is so loved you know what I'm saying like it, it didn't take any time for me to to like the character like I was already in I was already in after seeing his first match like oh he got this you know what I'm saying especially after seeing if you didn't if you didn't believe in him before once you seen his match with Aleister Black that was it like if you ain't behind him after that, like I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm saying? Like it's there's there's we can't have that conversation because I'm going to disagree <laughs> every time. Like it's just I don't know. Patrick he knew his worth early. He knew who he was when he was on Tough Enough, and it's crazy that he didn't win. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? That I I see that happen one too many times. Look. Uh, the person at times that did that that one gets faded off into the background because once they um, are actually placed in the spotlight that they wanted, you know what I'm saying? Like it just doesn't happen. Like it don't work for them. But then you have somebody else like Patrick that comes along, and you know they they just they're just it. Like the person that they was looking for. You know what I'm saying? It was our, it was there all along. Yeah, they didn't win, but so what? We all knew when anybody that watched that season of Tough Enough knew that Patrick was going to be seen again. Like it was not, it was without question. Everybody knew like he was going to have a contract. Um, Keith, I can remember us talking about it after the fact like we just knew like okay yeah no he's gonna be we're gonna see him again at some point Patrick is now 22 you know what I'm saying Velveteen Dream Velveteen Dream is living his dream and is doing an incredible job at it I see him going places you know what I'm saying like it there's no question that eventually uh, I, I say it's not by the end of this year by next WrestleMania, he'll be on the main card. Yeah. He ain't gonna be in NXT too much longer. Yeah. So. I um. Let's get into Takeover, because we can go on. So, the opening match is the. Uh, the North North American uh, Championship match. Uh, one of my favorite matches. I mean, here's the thing. I don't really have a hole in the card, but this is one of my favorite no. matches. I thought, well, you know, I, you know, I appreciate that North American title, uh, but I'm glad the right. WWF brought it out and revived it. Um, the match consisted of Adam Cole. EC3, Velveteen Dream, Lars Sullivan, Ricochet, Killian Day. Now, here's the thing. I already X'd out Lars Sullivan and Killian Day from this match. Right. Um, I'm not trying to say that they are they don't have potential. I don't think I'm not trying to say that those guys I, I just look at them and I'm like, I can write them off out of this title thing out the out the blue. Yeah. Right? So that left me with Cole, EC3, Ricochet, and Velveteen. Um, I kind of knew it was go- it was going to be Adam Cole. I kind of th- why I said that there was I thought it'd be Cole or EC3, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And I think EC3 was my projected winner. 
Uh, but it was out cold, and I'm not mad at this. No, uh, not at all. Not it took a lot of work. He won it on his own. Uh, he did have help from a disputed era. Uh, which the undisputed era was down to what guy at this point besides him, right? Because it was just him and uh, Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, and Kyle had to be ready for the next match. They hated that they was got to do double duty, but they were prepared. Adam went out there and did his thing and won the belt. I thought right. it was a good match. I thought it had a nice pace. Uh, you, you kind of was didn't know who was going to take that shine. Uh, there were some good spots. There were some dangerous spots, but some good spots. Uh, th- right. That elbow for Velveteen was like, all right. Oh, that elbow from Velveteen was awesome. But I was like, did you hurt yourself in the process? Like, I was there for him. I was uh, for I'm pretty him. sure he like, did. Man. In case you can't, you can't take something from that height and not give yourself some, you know. Yeah, like, that's just, uh-uh. Trust me, it was too much. It was too mm-hmm. much already, but I was, whew. I, I took some gas during that match. I was like, oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> like, you know that that they're going to be fine, but at the same time, you really have to question it. Like, eh, no, nah, he might not be okay after that. Like, right. <laughs> these slams into these ladders, and no, nah, no, nah, he might not be okay after that. I'm just yeah. saying. So, it was intense, but I loved it. That was, that was, oof. That match was greatness. I knew, of course, it was. It's a six-pack challenge ladder match for the t- for a title. But no, yeah. I knew that match was going to be amazing, and I'm glad they opened with it. That was well, the perfect match to open with. I think the way they do matches now, the way they do shows, I think what, what we've decided in wrestling, we want a match that's going to set the pace for the evening. Uh, I would like to not do. Too much in the opening match matches, but I get it right now. The mm-hmm. thing is, too, if your match is a different kind of match, like this match here, is completely different from how the main event was structured. So I can rock with right. it. Um, women's title: Shayna Baszler uh, defeated Ember Moon. Uh, of course, I called that. I knew that was going to happen because, yeah. as we see, Ember uh, was going to be moving on. Right. The booking of the match is what was interesting to me, right? I I felt like Shayna would win and it would be a situation where she would dominate and she would kind of be a big bad bully, which she didn't, but I get it cuz you can't you can't you could kill Ember could go move it on. Right. Uh but I almost kind of felt like she was a baby face in this match. You know what I mean by that? Generally, what you do when a baby face goes over, they suffer and they suffer and they sell and they sell and then they get their breakthrough and then they move and, and they win, right? That's kind of how she won that match because this was more of an ember dominant match, right? Where she hurt Shayna. Now, the irony of her hurting her was based on she used a move that Shayna had used to hurt many wrestlers. Recently, so I get that portion right. of it. Like that's like, all right, the bully got a taste of her own medicine, and she had to fight off after getting a taste of her own medicine. But watching her suffer, I felt like a level of empathy for her when she should be the heel, and I shouldn't feel that empathy. But she came out and pulled it off, and it was like, all right. But I guess. What you did do was you let your outgoing champion look like she was strong and it was really tough to beat your outgoing champion. And your new champion fought and deserves the title that she has. And now she has to worry about the all-comers, right? Because there's a whole roster now. Like we've already discussed Bianca Blair. Uh, Kira Sane, I think since winning the Bay Young Classic, has been a favorite and wants to be the champion. Uh, it, it is more. So, uh, once again, 
people have moved on. So now it's time to see who's that new crop of, of, of ladies who are going to fight for that title. But, Keish, what were your impressions of the match? Um, I was actually a lot more. I, you know what? I don't know what to expect because it, I knew this match would be a lot more intense than it was the last time they fought each other, and it's because I know Amber had a vendetta. Like she was out for revenge. She wanted to kill Shane and that ring, <laughs> but um, it was because of all everything that she had did to her. Um at the last takeover. Right. So I understood. I understood, like, it was going to be some tension already going into it. Just the, it was, they were, like, brawling all the way up until this point. So, literally. So, like, it, it, I knew it was going to be heartfelt. You know what I'm saying? But I told myself, if Amber loses this match, she's not staying in NXT. Um, I knew this had to be it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if she retained, then I was like, okay. Like, they're going to keep her there for a while longer, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I knew if she dropped that belt, they weren't keeping her in that seat. Like, it just, it told, I told myself this before I went into it. And I told myself Shayna was going to win. And I and I said this because um, so they're going to have Amber drop that belt, but they're going to have Shayna become, she's going to be the prevailer. She's going to be the winner of this, like, this time on you know, it was so heartfelt when she lost the last time. Because as we've seen in both the Mae Young Classic and, you know, at the last takeover, like, Shayna can't, and when she loses, it's like her whole world is destroyed. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the look that she has on her face. Like, you can see the disappointment. But then there's this heel, the heel part of her is just snaps. And then she goes around being the bully, beating up on folks, you know, putting big holes on people and you know it's like come on man like what are you doing so um when she won in the fashion that she did it was kind of like mm, you know what I'm saying but at the same time I understood why she just walked away I mean what, what can you do after that you, you not the you put the girl was unconscious in the room it was like what is what is there to do after that like, you, you're going to beat up on her when she's defenseless? No. Like, I mean, you've done enough of that. So, I understood why she walked away. Um, her celebration with the, with the, with two out of the other horsewomen was, uh, ironic. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, it was kind of like, uh, a foreshadowing. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, there, there's mixed feelings about that. There's one. All right. She celebrated with the person who quite possibly is the current biggest baby face in the company. Right? Right. Right. But they are legitimate friends. And right. the world knows that. And it does lend some more credibility and some shine when she's out there next to what we see now maybe as the biggest star of the division and possibly in the company, right? right. Mm -hmm. So, I, I can see that side of it. Also, eventually there's going to be a few down the road, right? Right, right. And that snapshot of that moment will be used in that feud, Cause here's the mm -hmm. thing. here's the feud. Shayna comes to the main roster. Ronda's champion, right? Shayna wants a title shot. She might even turn on Ronda, like she might beat her up in the ring or something like that. Here's the story. We used to be friends, but you always held me down. Right. When we was in the UFC, you was the number one person. You was at the top. You never gave me a title shot. We was friends. You never gave me a title shot. You gave these other so and so's title shots, but you didn't give me one because you were scared. You knew I could beat you. Right. Fast forward. Here we are, WWE. You you held me down. You got I'm on NXT while you going straight to the show. Your opening match is WrestleMania, it. right? I had to grab. Mm -hmm. 
I right. proved that I could beat everybody here. And now, you don't want to give me a title shot now. Because you scared right. me. Right. And, and, and that's the story. Right. So. Yeah. That, I mean. And, and I don't. Because obviously. We see there's a distinct separation between NXT and the main roster. Correct. Like, so I knew that it, it's possible for me to be friends with a heel if I'm in on the main roster. And they're NXT because no one will mention this. No, you know no, no, like, no, not only it will never be mentioned. We're two different universes within the same. Matter of fact, we're two different places within the same universe, right? right. So exactly. over here, the rules don't necessarily apply, and we work a little differently. Right. So yes. So it, it's never. They're never. The only time it's mentioned, of course, is is moments like that where Ronda's in the crowd cheering on Shayna. It's like, oh yeah, they go to the other two four. But it's not. It, it, of course, they'll mention Ronda and her matches, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, they never bring up, you know, what I'm saying like the difference between the two, and you know, give this long drawn out speech about how Ronda acts on the main roster as opposed to how Shayna is in NXT. Like that never happens. They never. Um, Correct. Reference the two and those instances. No, that compare said contrast is not gonna come up until completely necessary, right? right? But um, right, just understand down the road that match is happening. Um, the undisputed era. Are your new tag team champion? Well, that you do. They are your reigning tag team champions and new winners of the Dusty Rose Classic. That's right. That's a little awkward because mm-hmm. uh, they went to the finals, but they still won it because right. of the stipulation of the match. So they went down and attacked the number one contenders and figured out that they had to mess themselves up in a triple threat. And now with the triple mm-hmm. threat, it's like they got rewarded for being assholes. But anyway. Uh, the highlight is that Roderick Strong turned on Pete Dunn. And uh, made himself part of the Undisputed Era. Now, this works as storyline because he did turn down the Undisputed Era at one time, but he was there. Right, right. Um, They are all former ROH guys who kind of came over at similar times. That helps. So, there's history, there's understanding. What I'll say for this, in this era, um, it was a nice swerve, because I wasn't expecting it. I was not expecting it. Uh, I knew authors of pain wouldn't go weird, because of course they were going to go to the main roster. I didn't, I, I didn't know. Pete, I, I thought maybe Pete Dunn and Roderick Strong really had a chance at this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, it was a good match. Adam Cole held his own, and then he had to get taken out of the match, which I think somebody said, look, we just put him through this table, he can rest. Right, right. Kyle O'Reilly uh, gave what the better... Was a star. Man. Yeah. When he had, like, the one dude for the others to pay, and, like, the lock, and then he had, was it Pete Dunn or Roddy? And, like, he had two submissions yeah. going at the same time. I was like, that boy good. Right. Right. Um, I thought Pete Dunn worked a hell of a match. Roderick worked a hell of a match. And I mean, Roderick in particular because he had to sell that he's going hard for his team up to the last second. Right. Mm-hmm. And he did that. Like, they beat the hell out of each other. Like, there was no inclination. Like, hey, somebody there acted funny. Right. So. Like, it, it did not show at all. There was no... There was not even an inkling that he was going to turn on him. Like, you had no clue. So, <sighs> shout out to him. Um, so, now the Undisputed Era consists of Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, Roderick Straw, and Adam Cole. Um, Adam, North America champion. Right now, Roderick and um, Kyle O'Reilly would have fit the tag champs until Bobby Fish is back. Right. 
So it's going to be kind of like a free bird rule kind of thing. But yeah. well, I think Roddy will move on and try to challenge Pete Dunne for that UK title. Right. Because that's what's going to happen. Pete Dunne got to get his revenge. I'm about to say Pete Dunne coming for that ass. Like, that ain't but, no, there's no question about that. So, with that, he's going to have to use his title as a little bit of currency to get a shot. And Roddy, don't duck him. But eventually, it's going down. And that belt gonna be the center of attention. Right. You got a faction, man. It's gonna be crazy. Now, I don't expect Roderick to win that belt. Because that belt needs to be in the UK being defended. Even though it's gonna get defended right. over at NXT a lot, too. Because the thing is, unless Roderick go do a lot of traveling. Right. Because that That's belt. Gonna be a lot of traveling. Because that UK situation is, go, is still strong, and I think they still want to do like an active live promotion over there. Um, right. So that happened. Uh, Alistair Black is our new NXT uh, champion, defeating Andre C. and Alamps. Uh, good match. Uh, shout out to Zelina Vega. Uh, I thought she did a really good job as a manager. I thought her brand of managing and trying to get her guy over really helped. Uh, she put her body on the line. Um, she might be the second best manager in that company besides Paul Heyman. Yeah, true. That's true. That say a lot because Paul has like 30 some odd years in the business. This young lady is incredibly talented and I think she'll be an asset to whoever she's around. Uh, right. when CN moves on to SmackDown or whatever, I'm excited to see what they do with her. But, Aleister Black, new NXT champion. I think from day one in NXT, we had decided that that guy was going to be champ, and it is good to see him make good on his his move. Uh, what you think of the match, Keish? I thought it was awesome. Um, I thought it went it was it flowed very well. Um, Alistair is like the goat. <laughs> um, he's he's amazing. Um, I thought Andre did a incredible job. Um, I I was impressed. Like I just I I, I knew the match was going to be good. Um, it definitely exceeded my expectation. It's it's amazing to see Alistair Black in the ring. Um, I really wonder how they're going to get that belt off of him. Like, I, I hate that that was my first thought when he won the title, but I was like, how are they really going to... Because he hasn't lost in singles competition. Like, in one-on-one competition, he has not lost a match at all. So, I really wonder how are they going to... Um, how are they going to get this belt off of him? Like, is he going to retire it like uh, Asuka did when she left NXT, or is she is he going to end up dropping it to somebody? You know what I'm saying? Will he suffer his first uh, single loss before he ends up going to the main roster? Or, like, how are they going to do this? And I really I really wonder that. I really wonder how this is going to go for him. Um, I question it. But at the same time, of course, only time will tell. You just have to wait and see. So, um, I, But I'm, I'm glad that he's the champ. Like, I'm glad that he won that, though. But I, I have to honestly say that... Uh, them giving Andres uh, Zelina Vega was the best fucking thing for him, and he was it. He was not a bad champion. Like I, I really honestly could say that like, he was an awesome champion because uh, with her assistance, like I think by himself, it was he was just it was just off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once they gave, once they gave her. To him as his manager, like that was it. I was like, no. oh yeah. No, she gave him some direction. She gave him some direction because right. he did not have it. Um, right. Yeah. So, interested to see how that goes forward. Uh, main event, Johnny Gargano uh, defeats Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, Johnny has now got his job back. Um, here's the thing. Johnny couldn't keep taking losses. As Right. Those matches were too good, but he could keep taking Like, he could keep coming on to lose it in. Um... I've heard different people review this match. I heard Cornette kind of give give it a hard time. 
I thought it was a good match. I thought it captured the emotion. Um, right. I thought they set it up pretty well. I respect that they left it as the main event, so did nothing get in the way. They didn't have to worry about holding back because there was nobody going behind them. They was this is it. Right. There was a real energy about that match, right? Because people love Gargano, people hated Chopper. Not because Chopper's a bad guy, because they love Gargano that much. Like, Gargano had as close to what I've seen of a Daniel Bradfield in a long time. Like, I remember when Sami Zayn first came in the NXT, and he, was, he had some good matches. And the match he had against Cena when he challenged for the U.S. title in the Open Challenge, I was like, wow, this man could be a poor man's Daniel Bryan, right? Right. Um, I since uh, backtracked on that, but with Gargano, I feel like he has that energy where like people are going to root for him. And part of it is that wrestling pedigree that I think is just going to cause people to root for him. Uh, despite his size and stuff like that. Now, he okay. is he's going to be at NXT for a little while longer. Uh, I don't... Like, I thought this was a guy that they probably was going to try to move to SmackDown or 205 Live or something like that. But, I get his wife just came to the, to the show. So, he's probably going to spend some time with his wife at NXT. That's going to help her transition and his. Right? Right. So... We'll see how it goes. Uh, glad he won. And, you know. Nice match. Brutal match. But, you know, it got the job done. Right. Alright. Well, Keish, that leaves us with WrestleMania. The showcase of the Immortals. Um, I'm going to give a little love to the pre-show. Because the pre-show consisted of two Battle Royals and the Cruiserweight title match. Yeah. Which I thought the Cruiserweight title match should have been on the main show, but you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I felt like that that was open and match material. But this, here's the thing. One thing I'm going to say with the WWF. The, they're gonna have to trim this show down to four hours max. Right, right. Because that was entirely too goddamn long. Two that hours of pre-show, damn long, and like five hours of it WrestleMania. Because the thing is, right. it was slated to go off at eleven. It went off about eleven forty-five. Like five hours of WrestleMania, key seven to like midnight. Like I, I'm a grown man. They got shit to do. <laughs> it was entirely too long. It was I can't. Entirely too long. It's it's and I just cussed it. I'm about to say this. It, it was Sunday. I had to go to church. Um, I had to go see my. I had to go see my nephew. Uh, shout out to Messiah. Uh, who uh, we shout out on the last episode because he was bored. Around that time, or was the previous set to take over? Either way, it go. He's he's here. He's a, he's out here in this right. world, laughing, mm-hmm. playing, and uh, getting ready for his close up. So, right. uh, you future WWF wrestlers, just understand the belt's coming home. The belt's coming to Atlanta, GA. <laughs> it's about twenty two years from now. So you got twenty two years. Right. If you go shine, you better shine now. Get your shit together. Get your That's shit together. Because in 22 Nicholas. years, you don't notice. Nick. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, Nicholas, Nicholas 10 now. He going to be getting old. Then, you know, he going to feel like he in his prime or whatever. But, hey, man. Choke over there. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas about to get choked the fuck out. <laughs> All right, damn. That's it. That's how it's going to go. I, 32 wasn't old, but damn, it, he, they made him look old as shit. Yeah. Right. Nicholas getting it. Nicholas go get these hands. And 
Them hands is going to be brutal. <laughs> that, that baby was born at eight pounds. He ain't about to be no little man. Yeah, right. You sure right. No, that is not happening. All right. But uh, shout out to Naomi uh, winning the women's battle yeah. royal. <laughs> now, that being said, I thought they took an incredible story and it was just like, ugh, because no, a lot of people forgot Naomi was still in the match. <sighs> Which the WWE, sometimes they do swerves that are just unnecessary, right? Right. So we get to the end, and it's Bailey and Sasha. Who Bailey and Sasha decided at one point they was gonna team up and toss everybody out. Um, which also, shout out to the ladies at NXT, because during that match they decided that they was gonna take over for a little while. Right. And was tossing everybody out. It was Chad NXT. I like that. I like that. Tell the main roster chicks you ain't y'all ain't playing. Right. Okay. But Bailey and Sasha went to work and did it was just them too. And then Bailey decided she was going to be the one who tossed Sasha out. Like, hey, I can. It was like Bailey finally stood up for herself. She finally got what she wanted. She finally got this. And then it was like, oh, she didn't really win. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. But they have a feud. It's going to continue. Like, they. The crowd was really up for the Bailey versus Sasha thing. Because they should have had a one on one match at WrestleMania. But that's they really fine. Should have. That's fine. And the crowd showed you how into it they were that it was like, oh, okay. <sighs> Which we're gonna talk about a lot about crowd reaction in, in, to the course of this show. Cause I think you have to learn from certain things. And uh, good or bad. Um uh, Matt Hardy won the men's battle royal uh, with help from Bray Wyatt, of all people. Right. And now the Bray Wyatt-Matt Hardy tag experience that I thought about is happening. I'm not saying I saw it coming, but either I, <laughs> but either I saw it coming, Keish, or... The writers listen to this podcast, which I fully believe there's, there's somebody inside to the right team listen to this podcast. Yeah, you know it. And they, and they take my ideals for free. That's okay. But, uh, Keith, yeah, um, looking at the show, shout out to, shout out to Matt. Uh, shout out to Cedric Alexander, Cruiserweight Championship, about damn time. Um, it was one of those where it's like, hey man, if this dude don't win this one, I don't know. Somebody go get jacked up. And I don't know if people was really there for Mustafa Ali either. So, good job, Cedric. So, that walks me up to the main show, Keish. Intercontinental right. Championship the Triple Threat opens up the show. Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, and The Miz. Uh, the Miz sends the Mr. Raj back to the locker room. Keith, my heel just sent his goons away. He was going to try to win this on his own. Yeah. N- new father, the Miz. Shout out to the Miz and the birth of his daughter, Monroe Sky. Um, which, that's an M name. That's an M family, right? All right? Mike, Maurice, and now Monroe. I like when families do cool stuff like that. Um, hence Keith and Keisha. You know, everybody else got different names. Um, yeah, I, I like when families do stuff like that. But anyway, um, they talked about Miz and fatherhood and stuff like that. I like shit. Y'all talk about Miz like a baby face. <laughs> I like. But uh, the WWE's MVP of uh, you know, of the year did not win that belt. He did not get to take his title home. Uh, Seth Rollins took the title off his hands. That's right. And Rollins went over the big way. And the curb stop came back. And it's, it's back now. Keish, how did, how did you feel about that match? Oh, man. Uh, I thought that match was awesome. I always enjoy seeing the curb stop. Like, there is nothing 
about the curb stomp that I don't like seeing. I'm telling you, it's just, I, I, that match was awesome. It went exactly how I thought it was going to go. Like, I was just, I don't know. I, I guess I was glad that it went first. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really was glad that it went first and that it was just, it was awesome. Um, uh, congratulations to Seth Rollins. I was excited that he won. I felt like this should have been Finn's moment. Um, Seth has had his WrestleMania one with, you know what I'm saying? I felt like Finn should have, this should have been his time. Um, I really thought he was going to win. Um, I actually predicted that he was going to win, but I, I, they, I'm not mad at them giving the belt to Seth. It's just, you know, sometimes you just really want it for someone else. You know what I'm saying? Like, and there's going to be a, a, a couple, there's going to be a few more times during the show um, that I'm going to say this again. You know what I'm saying? This is not the last time that you're going to hear this from me because there was a few more times during the uh, pay-per-view where I felt like a person's moment was taken from them and it shouldn't have been. So, um, I definitely, I, this was, this is to me is what started it off. It was, it's what snowballed it into those moments and I really just think that it just needs to be, um, that they just needed to get it together. But, um, all in all, I was impressed with the match itself. Um, I have no complaints. It, it definitely, served its purpose they definitely was it was awesome so I give credit where credit's due right um next match is a little bit of a uh, <sighs> so Charlotte Flair defeats Asuka and retains her women's title here we that, go with another one of those moments we now break the streak of two years. Um, mm -hmm. This is what I'll say, Keish. At the time, I felt a little bit different about it. I felt like the streak should not have been messed with. And I thought maybe that right. Oscar and Charlotte, Charlotte could be Oscar later, whatever. To be fair, they broke the streak in a title match at WrestleMania. Right. I can't be mad at that. I'm not mad at that. Even though like, they I'm not mad at that at all. I feel like it was the perfect time for it. They could have at the same time. Like even though I feel the like the second time a moment has been stolen from Oscar. You know what I'm saying? Like when I felt I really and, and this is at a major pay per view, at the major pay per view. You know what I'm saying? And I really was I was disappointed. I really, I have to honestly say I was disappointed. At first, I was like, yeah, go Charlotte, because I love Charlotte. I, I can't deny that. Charlotte is one of my favorite wrestlers right now, hands down, like, period. But I really wanted it for Oscar. I really wanted it for Oscar because I felt like that this was this was her time. You know what I'm saying? You know, it was, this was her due. Like, for her streak to be broken in this fashion was perfect. I'm not going to deny that. If they were going to break the streak, this was the perfect time to do it. But at the same time, I really... It, that, and I didn't choose a winner for this match for that reason because I knew no matter who won, my heart was going to be broken. Like, Charlotte losing that belt was going to break my heart. Oscar losing the streak was going to break my heart. Like, I didn't... There was no, no, no winner in this match for me because I was like, man... All of it's messed up, but I knew that something was going to have to give. So when Charlotte put in the figure eight, you know what I'm saying, and she tapped, I was like, bruh, what? Like, I was I was happy at first, and then I was mad because I was like, man, you know, I really wanted this for her. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like this is the second time that they've stolen something great from her because when she won the Royal Rumble, you know what I'm saying, she didn't even get to celebrate all the way. She was in the ring celebrating for like 30 seconds and then bam, Ronda Rousey. You know what I'm saying? Like, just took all the shine from her. Like, yeah. no, nobody talked about her uh, winning. Nobody said anything because Ronda Rousey. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was all over TMZ, the newspapers, the articles and all that. The next morning, they talked about Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Like, they didn't think, talk about her when the first one because nobody cared. Nobody cared. Nobody said anything about it because all her 
And it was crazy because nobody else knew about her debut but the folks in the back, and that was 10 minutes before they had decided that she was going to do this. And it was kind of like, that's not an excuse. Like, y'all just completely stole this moment from her. Like, this was her time, and this was her moment. This was her, her, this was supposed to be for her. And y'all just completely took it from her. And then when she lost at WrestleMania, I felt the same way. I felt the exact same way. I said, this was supposed to be her time, and y'all took that from her. Why? Why would y'all do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, y'all had her be winning the first Women's Royal Rumble just for her to lose. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. I'm not saying that every Royal Rumble winner wins, you know, at WrestleMania, because we done seen them. We done seen losses too many times. Look at Roman. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, uh, it's not that, uh, that she just should have won for that reason, but at the same time, y'all completely snatched her. Y'all, y'all been snatching moments from her for far too long. It's been going on too much, and she deserves to shine, and then y'all took it from her for what? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you even plan to do with her at this point? That's my question. Like, do y'all plan to send her to SmackDown? Do you plan to keep her on Raw? Like, what do you plan to actually do with her at this point? At this point, why would y'all take why would y'all take this moment from her? Like, that's why I was mad at. I was pissed. I was pissed. Like, I was like, for real. So this is what's happening. And if you think I was pissed, you should have seen. Yeah, I don't know if you read the tweet, but I was on Twitter. I was tweeting during WrestleMania, and I seen the tweets, and folks was extra pissed. Like. There was, there was, there was, the people on my timeline was not for it. Now, there was a couple here and there that was like, yeah, go Charlotte. But when I tell you that they shut that down, like, they was like, oh, no, this is what we're doing. Like, they were pissed. So, it, it was mixed emotions for me. It was really mixed feelings for me. And I was really, like, hurt. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, there was a few times during the show, during the pay-per-view, that this happened. And trust and believe, when we get to the mother moment, I'm going to be giving this speech all over again. <laughs> so, so right now, I'm going to step off my soapbox because <clears throat> I'm getting a little too emotional right now. Just let me calm down. All right. Um, here's the thing. I don't know what the long range plan is. But now I was thinking Oscar would have won the belt, remained undefeated, and she'd have rolled that to next year, and then face undefeated Ronda Rousey for the title. Okay, but what we can have here is now Charlotte's gonna face Ronda Rousey because I guess that would be seen as more of the money. Um, I'm okay now. Uh, apparently, no streak is safe in New Orleans. As that was to say, with Undertaker lost his WrestleMania streak, so right, you know, it's it, as the great philosopher said, it is what it is. Uh, now, in another match that'll piss you off, Jinder Mahal won the United States Championship, defeat Rusev, Randy Orton, and Bobby Roode, and become a new champ. So they did not give us Rusev Day. No, they didn't. Um, but you know what, though. I'm not mad at Jinder getting his WrestleMania moment, though. I'm not. I have to honestly tell you, I am not mad at that. Are they trying to bury Rusev, though? Yeah, I don't like that at all. Personally, I thought that was messed up. But I was like, I'm I'm not. I I really don't. It's it's funny because that's another moment where I had mixed feelings because I hated it for Rusev. But I was like, and I was like, wait, y'all got Jinder winning the United States Championship? But I was for it, though. It was kind of like, eh, well, you know, okay, you know what I'm saying. But I don't, um, I don't, ha- I don't, it's, I don't feel a way towards it. It's just I kind of was like, damn, though, you know, why y'all doing this to Rusev, man? What he do? Cause remember, uh, what is it? Last year he came, he was United States champ. Came out with the tanks and or was it the year before? I can't remember because you know I get mixed up in my WrestleMania moments. But you know. It was a time Rusev was coming out there with the tanks and Lana, and you know it was they did it up for him. But then y'all have him come to WrestleMania this year, and this is just like, oh well, no, nah, we ain't gonna. He can't have that, and it's messed up. You know what I'm saying? It really is. But I, I really wasn't too mad at Jinder winning. I, I was a little perplexed, like this is who y'all have for the winner. But 
at the same time, you know, I was like, shit, let him have his moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, people forget. I don't I don't let people forget. Jenny Mahal was a jobber, like, a few years ago. <laughs> so, this was a member of 3M, 3MB. So, I'm like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I give him his moment. Let him have his due. You know, he's living his best life right now. Just, I don't know what to say, but I know that. I feel like with Rusev, they're not just going to keep. I feel like right now they're doing the wrong thing with him, but I don't feel like this is going to stay this way. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then, this way I feel like Rusev will be back on his feet. Um, they'll have him back in the title pictures and really doing something with him as opposed to what they got going on with him right now. So, But I, I do feel that they're going to keep Aiden English by his side. That was the best thing that they did was pairing them two together. So I'm I'm excited about that. I know that's going to continue. I don't see that wavering anytime soon, especially with, well, we'll talk about that later. Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to jump ahead of everything. Let me try. Let me call that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was just mad that I felt like Rusev got buried. And that's pretty much why I'm going to leave that. Uh, Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle defeat Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Uh, Keish. Through all the gimmicks and all the things that happened, right? Right. How did this turn out to be match of the night? Right. Because, uh, I can tell you, because Stephanie fought harder than we expected her to. Like, it wasn't just her fighting, like, in the ring. Like, it was her fighting, like, her uh, antics, you know what I'm saying, the heel antics, pulling him out, pulling Angle down on the ring, slamming him into the steps, her pulling Ronda off the apron. Like, I felt like that was, like, the best shit. Like, I am, I'm not going to lie. Um, it made the match that much better. She fought. You know what I'm saying? The counter moves that she was doing to Ronda. Because obviously it showed that they studied her. That she actually trained and practiced. And you know what I'm saying? Like she was ready. Um, she didn't totally get her ass whooped. And that to me was in, was the most awesome part of this whole match. Because of course, you know, Triple H and Kurt Angle, to tell the truth, I mean, if you want to be technical, are the most experienced in the ring. You know what I'm saying? They've been doing this. So, uh... We all, of course, we expected a classic wrestling match from them two. But when it came to Stephanie and Ronda, it was different because, I mean, Ronda was a fighter, but at the same time, this is her being a wrestler. So we had to expect something a little different, but not too much different. You know, of course, of course, there there was the whole point of she had to learn to tone it down because this is a different type of ring. And with Stephanie, she had to learn to turn it up. Cause she ain't used to, she ain't no regular wrestler. Like, uh, the way that the promos went, you would think Stephanie's been wrestling full time for like the last 20 years. But we know that's not true. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody no. that ever follow wrestling know that ain't never happened. So it's like, um, but at the same time, she wasn't no slouch in that ring. Stephanie brought, brought a little bit with her. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like there was a real fight. You know, and, and it was an awesome match. Like, all the way around, that match was incredible. I was actually thoroughly impressed. It exceeded every bit of my expectations. But I, I think Angle, of course I think Angle and Rousey to win because you're not going to have Ronda losing her first match in, in WWE ever. Like, that's just not going to happen, especially at WrestleMania. Like, we all knew that wasn't going to happen. But it didn't happen in the fashion that I thought it would. And I'm glad. I'm actually happy about that because had this been just like a squash match, like I knew Triple H and wasn't gonna let it be just that. But at the same time, like I felt like, oh, Stephanie finna. I mean, yeah, Ronda finna get in here. She's gonna just smash Stephanie, and that's gonna be the end of it. But that's not what happened. That's not what happened at all. And you know, you had the men fighting the women, the women fighting the men. Like this was it, this was awesome. Like yeah. I was, I was thoroughly. No, like, um, like, yes. not uh, so traditional mixed tag. Um, people got involved. People got in the way. People did things to other people. Uh, I thought this match would be like this. Triple H and Steph, I mean, Triple H and Kurt would carry the water. But even with that, I was a little skeptical because both of them are not full-time wrestlers anymore. Um, 
I thought that for me personally, the match tapped into an emotional place, right? Right. Uh, first of all, Triple H and Stephanie are the best at promo. God, Lee, man, the way they were selling those interviews and stuff like that, it's like, all right, I can rock with this. Uh, the entrance, those two, man, that was that was a cold entrance. Yeah. With the motorcycles and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, I saw right. somebody on Twitter where they both, you know, they entered the ring and they stood there. They both did the water spit or whatever. <laughs> that was funny, though. Yeah, somebody had put hashtag, hashtag marriage goals. <laughs> that was funny, though, because Stephanie's been out. That water was hilarious. Like, I was <laughs> like, girl. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? But obviously y'all didn't take this day. Okay. <laughs> like the fan of me watched it and said, Alright, of course I'm on the baby faces side. Kurt and Rhonda. I'm tired of Stephanie right. and Triple H overexert their authority and doing stuff, da da da. Keith halfway through the match, I was root for Stephanie and Triple H because it touched me at like a <laughs> a real place. Like you laugh it. It was that I got to that husband wife dynamic. <laughs> y'all gotta fight for y'all wife. Yeah, like that. That was a that Keish, But you don't understand. You got that. I mean, that that's a real place. Like you don't necessarily end up in situations like that. But I think people want to believe that. Hypothetically, if there was ever that type of situation, that you or your mate would have each other back the way they did, and they had they had each other back. I mean, hey man, people took their faces to stairs. People went through tables. It, it was rough, but they was there for each other, and they made sure they always got back. They regrouped. Like there was a moment when they had both had kind of had Rhonda and uh. Kurt on the ropes and Stephanie looked at Triple H like hey man what we gonna do he was like look this the plan and they went out and did it I mean it, it was successful but it was just the fact that they like that's like how like I felt that like I just felt all that emotion like I, I felt like this whole thing of that like yo you you in here with somebody and y'all hey I, I'm out here and hey you touch my wife I don't care if I don't care if you are a woman and it's a mixed bag tag match. I'm about to I'm about to leg sweep your ass. You best with my wife. And if you just have to fall on your face, you just have to fall on your face. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna tell you right now, and this is just hypothetically speaking. If Nicole was outside right now and like the neighbor or some lady from upstairs was out there and they was yelling and cussing and a fight broke out. Right? Right. I'm not waiting for her husband to come downstairs or her boyfriend, whoever significant other shows up. Right. Just understand that if I see the fight, all everybody go, please don't have camera phones out there because somebody going to be like, it's a damn shame how hard Keith hit that woman. Because that's my wife. <laughs> not dealing with you. I'm just saying, Keish, if you and Jessica, either one of y'all, was out there, and if I have told this story before, Jessica, when she was a teenager, had gotten to it at school, mm-hmm. and some some beastly heifers decided that they was gonna wait for her to jump her at the bus stop. Me and Marcus went to the bus stop and was ready, and. I was going to knock some broads out. Y'all ain't going to jump my sister. (laughs) Situation didn't go down. Cooler heads prevailed. But I'm just saying, certain rules of society kind of go off the grid. Now, I know people probably listen like this. Okay for woman beater. I ain't never hit no woman. But, I'm just saying. I ain't going to say I ain't never hit a woman. Well, no, I can say I've never hit a woman. I might have played with a girl when I was a kid, but I ain't never hit a woman, right? But I'm just saying, if you out there tussle with my wife, hey man, you gotta go to sleep. That's just the rules. Then if your husband or significant other do come down, hey man, he gonna be by himself. 
It's 201 now. Because <laughs> that's how we get down. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, Keish, I, I, I felt the McMahons. That's all I'm saying. I felt them from a real place. Right. That's all. I'm not advocating hitting women. But I do like, hey man, you and your wife in it, you got her back, she got yours, and if somebody got to get a chair to the face to understand not to mess with y'all, somebody got to take that chair to the face. Keith, get it together. What? I'm just saying. Get Viol- it together. I'm just saying that I hope one day you can find a love that's strong enough for you to whack a man in the face for the person you love. That's all. That's all. I'm just saying. When you find a love, hey man, if you ain't willing to decap somebody for your significant other, y'all, y'all don't need that kind of love. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't have. Y'all had the right kind of relationship. That's all. That's all I'm saying, Keish. Mm-mm. That's all I'm saying. Let's, let's move on, sir, because you're doing too much. <laughs> okay. The Bludger Brothers uh, defeated the Usos at the New Day. Uh, we knew that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Undertaker and John Cena had their match. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Okay, okay. So, for those of you, those of you who don't know, uh, me and Keisha had like a Twitter exchange throughout this whole show. So, We've kind of sideways talked about this, and I think we talked about it a little bit when I saw her last week. Uh, well, no, because the show had finished. We saw NXT had finished. But <sighs> here's my thing, Keish. <sighs> we got to be protective of the legacy that is The Undertaker, right? Right. Mm-hmm. I need people when they go back to history. To be able to look at the books and be like, wow, this was magnificent. Right? Right. Mm-hmm. I do not want people to go back and be like, this dude lost like seven times at WrestleMania. Right? Exactly. Right. Um, I felt the match was unnecessary. I felt that John Cena not being in WrestleMania, having a match, wasn't the worst thing in the world. I also thought y'all could have got more mileage out of him just sitting out there ringside and bought a ticket. Because that, right. that shit seems interesting to me. Now, it was. if you want to do an Undertaker angle, how about the arena go black and Undertaker choke slam him outside, out there in front of that seat? Right. No match. Just Undertaker it. show up yeah, and choke slam him and leave him laying down in front of that seat. And that's it. That I could have rocked with. Um, when Elias came out, like I told you, I was happy to see Elias. Right? Right. If y'all really wanted a WrestleMania moment, Elias beats John Cena in an impromptu match. Do you know what that right. does for Elias' career? You know the young guy that you probably gonna, that's going to be around for a little while? But instead... A man 55 wrestled a man that's 40. Uh, And 55 year old one, of course. But, I mean, and it's not the expense of the 40 year old, but it's just like, uh, these guys ain't going to be around. At some point, this is diminishing returns. Uh, But, yeah, needless to say, that match happened. And uh, it was a squash, which. I saw people were like, hey, was that a good idea to squash Cena? Understand this. Cena is good money. You can't really bury John Cena. Like, that that, that guy's too entrenched. So he could take that loss. Right. I just, I don't know. I didn't feel it. It should never happen. 
Yeah. I, I'll say this and I'll say this and I'll say this and I'll say this. The streak, first of all, should have never been broken. I was not for that. I Amen. It. it was done. It was done. Yes. Okay. Basically, uh, it's all to be all. Yeah, don't, ain't no debating me on it. Like, Keith, I know, <laughs> I know me and you have discussed this. Ain't no debating me on it. Like, the streak should have never been broken in the first damn place. Okay. Let's just be, let's just get that out of the way right now. Second of all, uh, he should have never continued WrestleMania matches after 21. Like, once he won 21 matches, that was should have been it. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all should have let the streak live. If you want to have him continuing, you should have let the streak continue. Right. That's it. Like, if, if you was going to have him keep, continue to wrestle, you should have let the streak continue. To I think long. 25 and 0, and then call it a day. Right? Exactly. That's it. That There was no... I, there will be no debating me on this. No. He should have never lost to Brock Lesnar. He should have never lost to Roman Reigns. Like, it should have never happened. Like, if y'all was going to let the streak... If you're going to let him continue wrestling in WrestleMania, he should have continued winning at WrestleMania. That's it. Like, in the story. If y'all were going to have him wrestling in 25 WrestleMania, that should be his record, 25 and 0. That's it. There's no... There ain't no... I don't even want to talk about it. But then y'all have him in squash matches... At WrestleMania now, like for what? I feel like they do the same thing with the Undertaker they just did with John Cena. He just has to be there, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, yeah, he can make an appearance, and we don't have no problem with that because you know Shawn Michaels was doing that at one point. He was making just making an appearance. Hey, I'm here. What's up? Hi, everybody. You know, whatever. Right. Come out there, kick somebody's ass real quick, and leave. But it wasn't in like an actual match. There was no referee. There was nobody there. Count one, two, three, and no shit like that. Like it, 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 it's just for the appearance. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like you said, had he choked Slam John Cena in front of his seat, then everybody would have been satisfied. Undertaker would have shown up. Cena would have been there. Bam! Now you got your WrestleMania moment. Cena's WrestleMania moment happened. Undertaker would have been there, and that would have been it. But instead, y'all have this impromptu match, which shouldn't happen, and. And I have, I don't, I'm not totally mad at it, but at the same time, it should have never happened. If you were going to have Elias come out, that's who John Cena should have wrestled. He should have wrestled Elias. Um, Elias should have won. It, it should have put Elias over and set him up for an awesome career. But instead, you just had Elias show up, did do nothing, and leave. What? What was the point? What was the point in that? So Elias can say he was on, he was in WrestleMania. Like, he was, at, he was gonna be there regardless. He was in the back. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, he ain't come out with the guitar, but at the same time, he was in the back. Like, he was like, what What? What was the point? Y'all should have just left him in the back. Y'all was gonna do that. Because it did, it did the exact same thing had y'all not brought him out at all. It did nothing. It did nothing for him, and it was a waste. But then you bring out Undertaker. You bring out the Undertaker, you have him squash John Cena real quick, you know, and then that was it. It was like, what? I have to honestly ask, what was the point? You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't feel like, you know, it should have, this should have continued in the first place. Like, if you ask me, Undertaker should have started wrestling in WrestleMania years ago. Like, that's my own personal opinion. But if you were going to have him continuing, he should have, the streak should have continued with him. Y'all are just tarnishing his legacy with these WrestleMania matches, man. Like, this is too much. You know what I'm saying? Him losing the streak was one thing. Then y'all had to lose the Roman. That pissed me off. All the way pissed me off. Because it was like, what the fuck was the point in that? You know what I'm saying? Like, why? And then, y'all, now y'all got him in squash matches with John Cena? Come on, man. Like, do not do this to him next year. Like, yeah. I'm not with it. I'm not. No. Here's the thing. The man's now 24 to a WrestleMania. I think we're good. But we'll see. Because I. Hey, man. Apparently now he must feel good. Because we got some old matches on the book. So we'll talk about that a little later. Well, uh, yeah. Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon defeated Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Which we knew was going to happen. Because Daniel Bryan could lose his first match back. Um, right. The match flow, kind of how I thought it would, where Shane would take some beatings, and, but he'd get his Shane spot, which he did a coast-to-coast, uh, which is more about than the other stuff he's done at WrestleMania recently. Uh, but Shane went for it, uh, 
But they, they tagged Daniel in. Daniel did what he had to do. They won the match. Uh, Kevin and Sami Zayn are no longer a part of SmackDown. And they did not get their jobs back. What will right. they do? They're going to be working. I, I think that that is an interesting story. Right. It is. Because it's like, how how are you going to place them? Um, Nia Jax defeated Alexa Bliss in the Women's Championship match. We figured that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, AJ Styles defeated Shinsei Nakamura to retain the WWE Championship. But Keish, after the match, Shinsei went to uh, a different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm are, glad. Yeah, I was going to ask you, are you here for Hill Nakamura? Yeah, I am. I am here for Hill Nakamura because he took his moment. Remember when I said there was a few times during the show that people moments got stolen? This was yeah. one of them. I felt like Nakamura won, that, won the Royal Rumble. He should have won the title. Period. The end. That's it. No, I don't have anything against AJ Styles. But he should have won the belt. This is WrestleMania. He should have had this moment. You know what I'm saying? That should have been all him. I'm all for him. I'm all for him, that, that, uh, Shinsuke. Forget it. Like, I don't know. They ain't no. I, I was all for it. When he attacked AJ, I was just like, ha ha. Like, that's it. He took his moment. And I'm glad he did. No, you ain't going to steal this from me. Forget it. Ain't no shaking your hand and being all nice about this. Forget it. I'm for it. You damn right I'm for it. And I'm all, I fully agree with it. And I, and I can't wait to see what they're going to do with him. You right, like I, mm mm, y'all not finna sit here and act like, um, he should have. Uh, that was just wrong, and no, what was wrong was y'all having him lose that match. That was wrong. That's who. That was the whole left that this match took in the first place. I was pissed. I was like, what do you mean? So you mean to tell me both Royal Rumble winners lost this year? Come on, man, for real? Nah, bro. That's not how we do these things. It's just not. So I wasn't for it. I was not for it. I was. I didn't agree with it. I was pissed about it. But when he attacked AJ, I was like, you know what? I ain't that mad no more. I really ain't. Mm-mm. I, I don't know if anybody out there really knows, but there's times, man, I'm all for the heel. I am. I just, I, 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 Because if you, if you good at what you do, I'm telling you. So, yeah, this is one of the moments. Well, he we're finding out. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, Keisha's all here for Hill Nakamura. Um, Braun Strowman and Nicholas uh, with the That's WWE right. Raw Tag Team Champions. Uh, if you did not watch WrestleMania, you were like, who the fuck is Nicholas? Nicholas is a 10-year-old boy. Braun pulled out the stands. Uh, the dirt sheets have discovered, I think, his dad's a ref. Uh, um, oh, okay. Um, there's also rumors that Nick- Nicholas was going to be suspended for using Flintstone vitamins, but that's all I need to hear there. <laughs> um, they won. Hey, Nicholas got tagged in. He just immediately tagged out. Braun did the heavy lifting. Um, people had problems with this, and I didn't. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it ain't like they put the boy in the ring and he drop kicked somebody. Broad just needed a partner. He stood there on the ringside. Broad did the work. It says Broad is such a monster he can beat two dudes and be the champ. Um, Broad now has held a championship. Just didn't hold on to it. Um, so the surprise of the night, Keish, was Brock Lesnar defeating Roman Reigns to retain the Universal Championship. Um... I have to honestly say, at this point, during the pay-per-view, my laptop was already up and I was already doing homework. Um, I was not really looking forward to this match at all. Uh, I have to honestly say, the way that Bron- the way that Brock Smash Roman was actually kind of interesting. But at the same time, it I wasn't really for the match in the first place. When... when when Roman won the Elimination Chamber to face Brock, I was already like, oh no, I'm not for it. Um, so when the match came on, it actually went the way... I did, it didn't... Uh, it met every expectation that I had of it. And I didn't think that it was a horrible match. I just didn't... I wasn't really into it. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we've seen this before. 
Now, I ain't seen him bust him open like that before. Now, that was new. I was like, oh, hmm. What is this? I felt like at some point during that match, Brock forgot that he was in a wrestling ring and just completely lost his mind. And that's how all that blood ended up everywhere. But I said, you know what? Like, hopefully they don't they don't do this again next year because I'm just not I'm not for it. I'm not for it. Mm-mm. Like, I'm the one not to be in the main event next year. That's all I'm saying. So, I don't feel any kind of way about it. I feel like it was a crappy end to the pay-per-view. Y'all could have did better than this. Yeah. But whatever. So, especially WrestleMania. You can't end WrestleMania like that. You remember when he won? <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, sorry. That's just, I shouldn't be laughing at that, should I? Like, I'm awful. But seriously, like, I, I thought it was a horrible ending to, the, okay. to, to all of it. Here's the thing. This is a, this is a, this is an interesting match. Not by the match, but just the, how everything went down. One, Roman beating Undertaker last year was, I thought, the setup for Roman to win this match. Right? He finally right. overcomes. He finally beats Brock at the big. He he beats the baddest man on the biggest stage because until you beat Brock, you are not really champ. Right? Right. Winning champs from secondary people after Brock done lost it ain't don't make you the champ. Beating Brock makes you the champ. Uh, Taker I mean Beating Taker The follow up He should have beat Brock But he didn't uh, We thought Brock wasn't going to re-side Apparently he has re-side Multi-year deal uh, Which will allow him to do UFC stuff uh, Brock Busted Roman open the hard way Like there was no blade Uh there's elements that Brock got to with Vince backstage, which could be a work, could be a shoot. Who knows? Uh, my main thing is the fan reaction, Keish. The guy that you've been selling to the world that's going to be your guy got his ass beat at the end of WrestleMania, and the guy who mm-hmm. did it didn't get any heat from the fans. Right. Right? Like, they were cheering. Like, they... Okay, the, mm-hmm. the fans' response was kind of lukewarm during the match. But they was cheering right. at the end. Like, y'all cheering Brock after he done beat the hell out of Roman? Mm-hmm. This shit done went the wrong direction. Oh, it got worse at uh, Raw. On Raw, when we talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it got worse on Raw, when we talk about that. Yeah, this shit done went the wrong direction. Uh, but that being said, we're going to take our first break. We are an hour and a half in. We usually don't take breaks this late, but we are. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to come back, go do the news. Um, I just got a story that I posted to the Facebook page and on our Twitter account that uh, don't let the headline catch you. The man's okay. But when you read the headline, you're like, what is the TMZ? But uh, yeah, go ahead and put that out there. And we'll be back shortly. I vividly recall the signing of the contract for your title shot at Hulk Hogan in WrestleMania 3. You said you taught Hogan a lot, but you had still one more lesson to give him in the final chapter in that big title match at the Silver Dome in Pontiac on the 29th. You want to talk to somebody? You talk to me. He's going to do all his talking in the ring. You talk to me. You want to talk about the final chapter? I'll be glad to talk about the final chapter. The final chapter in the life and history and the career of Hulk Hogan. See, because it's over, Hogan. I know it. You know it. Everybody knows it. You had three good years. You can't laugh at that. You were lucky. You made some money. You got a cartoon. You got some dolls. You rode good. You had it good. But you know you can't beat this man. Toughest man in the world. Nobody can beat this man. You think with all that blonde hair and a bunch of little hulksters out there and behind you, you ripping that t-shirt off and shaking in your pythons, you think you can beat him, dummy? It can't be done by you, ten guys like you, or a hundred people like you. This is the next heavyweight champion of the world. Get ready to swallow it, Hogan. It's all over. 
Andre, what about that that final lesson? You don't understand, do Wait you, dummy? I do the I'll talking. I'll conduct these interviews here if you don't mind. Oh, maybe I will conduct them. How do you like that? We are back at it. Okay. Um, Keish. Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm skipping all over stuff. Yeah. It, it, whew. That was a long intro to the show. If I had to do better, we would have just probably did that part of the show and did what to do the rest of this. But we're going to wrap it up pretty quick. Uh, birthdays. So we are in the middle of April. Right. Uh, uh, tomorrow. Is uh, April fifteenth. Uh, Impact Wrestling Champion Austin Aries celebrates a birthday. Austin Aries turns forty. Mm. Uh, uh, yesterday, well, today because it's still Saturday. Uh, Lita celebrated her birthday. Lita turned forty-three. Uh, Monday the sixteenth uh, has a lot of birthdays. Uh, Mia Yim. Will turn 29. Shout out to Mia. Um, she also has a sister. Uh, who just happens to be on the Twitter machine. Her name is Miss Yim 2 on the Twitter. Uh, yeah buddy. Oh but that's another story for another time. Uh, and I mean don't get me wrong. I, I think Mia's a fox too. But that's sister. Okay uh, mm-hmm. anyway. Paul London celebrates a birthday. Uh, one half of London and Kendrick. Uh, London will turn 38 on Monday. Uh, Vicky Guerrero. Uh, Vicky celebrates a birthday on Monday. Vicky will be turning 50. Mm. Yes. Go. Uh, and uh, the late, great George Animal Steel, uh, his birthday is going to be on Monday. Uh, George would have been 71. Yes, 70. Um, hold on. Make sure I get this right. It would have been 81. Because he was born in 1937. So, yeah, 63 plus 18. He would have been 81. So, uh, shout out to George. I heard people talking about George the Animal Steel the other day. And it was like, yeah, man, he'll tear the turnbuckle and this, that, other. Like, I believed he was an animal. And I'm like, do y'all know that man is actually brilliant? <laughs> no, for real. Like, George Adam Steele was a wonderful, lovable character. But, uh, and also, it's kind of funny because if you are a 1980s fan, you remember the lovable guy who was tearing up the turnbuckle. If you are a 70s wrestling fan, that dude was a killer. But, um, the thing is, the guy's brilliant. Um, very smart guy, was a school teacher by trade. Uh, graduate from Michigan State University. Uh, you know, he actually taught school and wrestled on the weekends, like main event in Madison Square Garden on the weekend. But part of it was because it was during the territory era. So he'd wrestle at MSG and be George the Animal Steel. I think his name was something different in real life. He fly back to Michigan and teach during the week and coach football. And nobody knew the difference because the territories, because in Detroit, that was a whole other television. Like their territory, I think it was IWA, uh, whichever had Dick, the, the, wherever Dick the Bruiser was on. Uh, that was that territory, right? Dick the Bruiser, right. the original Sheik, who happens to be Sabu's uncle. Uh, those guys were had the Detroit TV at the time. So the WWWF, which w- what it was at the time, Vince Senior, that was in New York in the Northeast. So nobody knew the difference. And then I think he wrestled under a mask at some point in his career. So he would wrestle on the weekends, you know, on the other side of the country. And nobody knew wh- what he was doing. And then he was teaching school during the week. Um, 
Yeah, just just fun facts. Um, so, Keish, you want a funny story? Because I, I I think I've already covered. Brock's going to be resigned, and Paul Heyman is also included on that new contract. Because Paul got to get a deal if Brock got a deal. Because they ain't gonna have no Brock without Paul, right? All right. So right. that's happening. Uh, Rusev is still with the WWE, and you're like Rusev still is with the WWE. Yes, because there was a lot of speculation that he had quit his job. Because uh, basically, him and Lana were trying to sell. Rusev was booked in a match with the Undertaker, the greatest Royal Rumble ever. Right. He got removed from that match, and they're gonna put Chris Jericho in instead. Don't know the reason behind it, had. but right. uh, Rusev had moved, removed all references from WWE from his social media accounts. And uh, he's not following anybody for the WWE, which I don't know if that matters because I don't follow people for work. But people, when they see that with a wrestler, the speculation machine starts going and thinking that he might not be, you know, especially since they've been squashing Rusev Day. But the WWE is your statement. There's no truth to that rumor. Rusev's still very much part of the company and will be booked at the world's greatest Royal Rumble, just not in that particular match. Um, Keish, you want a funny story? <clears throat> Please. From the New York Daily News. Well, actually, no, from the New York Post. WWE legend has stroke while having sex. What? Now, come on, man. Like, what? I cannot make this up. This is gross. Like... <laughs> It was shared by uh, Sam Magazine. He had a stroke? Who had a stroke? Jerry the King Lawler. He had a stroke? Why did he stop fucking with them young girls? That's what that is. Jerry was messing around with folks half his age and shit. You, Jerry, you can't be doing all this. Like, what the hell? You need to find you somebody your age, sir. Like, this is not gonna work. Like, I, I'm just saying. You know he be running around with these Point at thirty something, Jerry. You ain't that young no more. You you gotta hang that up. Like I don't know what you thinking. Like, I don't know what you thought, but you need to go ahead and let that go. Like for real. And this is this is a scare for him. And I it's a big scare, but it's like, sir, that that's just something that you just some things you just can't do. You know what I'm saying? Like you you gotta let that go, honey. It, this is this is their sign. This is. This is your sign that it, no, mm -mm, no, no, <laughs> like, I'm just saying, I, I'm done with this, I am so done with this. Yeah, um, I, I just saw it, I, I shared it, because I'm like, I'm crazy, but, uh, yeah, that's, that happened, uh, and like I said, you should quit for Lawler is 68 years old, um, his significant other, I think, uh, his fiance, which they been fiancés forever. Shit, I mean, they ain't gonna pull that trigger. Uh, maybe King don't want to give her no money. Um, she is, I think, like twenty eight. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Mm mm. No. <laughs> like, mm mm. But yeah, she uh. He, he admitted it during his podcast. So this is not like this happened like yesterday. Because the way the New York Post posted I'm like, damn, this was what now? But apparently, you know, what happens is he uh, he had stroke. It was like in March. Uh, he went to the hospital for a couple of days. And he was able to be at WrestleMania. So all was good. I guess. Right. But I agree with you, Keish. Uh, probably need to stop fucking with the real girls. I'm but, but I mean, hey man, there's also the do what you feel. No, nah, nah, sometimes you gotta you gotta let some some stuff go. You gotta mm -mm. Hey, man. I'm not with all that. That man could have been going and coming at the same time, but that's that's too much. Oh uh, <laughs> no, right. I don't care what nobody say. I'm pretty sure that's not the perfect way to die. Like no, need you to Maybe not to be doing that, sir. Thank you. Um. So yeah, that that's for that. Um. 
Well, greatest Royal Rumble ever. Why are we talking about that? Uh, set the Saudi Arabia quiche. Uh, this right. thing is loaded with matches. Uh, the only thing I can think about is how much are these guys getting paid? Like, right. I think the WWE got to be get a brick for this. Because they up, they uproot their whole roster. They take them over to Saudi Arabia. And they have like seven title matches booked for this thing. They have a 50-man right. Royal Rumble, which means mm-hmm. that what they're going to do is probably use about 25 of the main roster guys. And they're probably going to use... Some indie guys that's probably in the area or in in Europe, and they're gonna probably use some local guys from Saudi Arabia, right? Right. Um, still, fifty guys is a lot of people. It's gonna air on the network as a special. Uh, we will preview the show, I guess. But I also feel like this is gonna take a lot of teeth out of Backlash because you put all the belts on the line and you take it easy, sixty feuds. What do you really have for Backlash? Because are you going to have another match based off this stuff? Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's neither here nor there. Uh, yeah, true. So let's get to Raw, because we're going to just basically fast forward. Uh, just really hit the high points. Uh, so boy Joe is back. Yes. So that's good. Uh, Raw Destroy had a Roman in a promo. Mm. Yeah. Hey man, Joe is just so good at that stuff. Right. Ember uh, Moon made her Raw debut as she teamed with Nia Jax to beat up Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. That, that was awful. Uh, no way, Jose! No way, Jose is on Raw. I kind of yeah, feel like yeah, he's... That's, that's, that's going to be weird for me. I thought I, I actually look at him as a SmackDown guy. But Keish, I thought I was just about, about to it. say the same thing. I was about to say the exact same thing. I feel like this guy should have debuted on SmackDown. Which he should have been on SmackDown. Like, Superstar Shake-Up could change all of that. He could get transferred to SmackDown what? on Tuesday or next week. That is true. That is true. But I, I just... I don't know. He just looked out of place on Raw. Like I was like, no, no, nah, he should have been on SmackDown. Yeah, yeah, I definitely should have put him on SmackDown. But. Yeah, that's definitely a SmackDown kind of thing. Uh, the Revival defeated Gallows and Anderson in a tag team elimination match, uh, so mm-hmm. they could go on and possibly uh, get a shot at those tag team titles that Nicholas and Broad had to give up because uh, apparently Broad had this thing called the fourth grade. They interfered with him, uh, defended the title. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> That's awful. Uh, Mandy Rose uh, defeated Sasha Banks and announced her. Uh, I was about to say announced her after the match. Paige announced that she's officially retired. Keish. I was about to say Mandy Rose ain't retiring from that. Like, I, I was told off. You need to get together. <laughs> it's getting late. <laughs> It's getting late. We like two hours in. <laughs> um, woke Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt defeated Titus Worldwide, so they also will move on to try to get to shot at those tag team titles. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bobby Lashley debuted on Raw Keish. So, how soon do we get to Bobby Lashley Brock Lesnar match up? Look, that's what I'm saying. By SummerSlam, right? Yes, I, 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 actually, I think SummerSlam is the perfect is the perfect venue for it, right? And then what you right. what we do is we say, hey, Paul Heyman cuts the great promos. He says, Bobby, you are an incredible athlete. You are a former NCAA champion. My guy is a former NCAA champion. Well, I think Bobby was an NAIA champion, but either way. Right? And maybe that's the angle. Mm-hmm. You were a national champion in college. My guy was a national champion in college. But you were NAI. My guy was NCAA. You are an accomplished fighter. But you fight in Bellator. My dude is a UFC fighter. See, you, you, you kind of like Brock Light. You're just not quite Brock. <laughs> I can see that. See, Akish, why am I not writing? For the right. Okay, okay, anyway. That being said, and they, and they could do that back and forth or whatever. 
but then Brock faces him. Because here's the thing, Brock will stand up against Lashley, and he'll they won't he'll look physically imposing, but not as physical. Like it, it's just like they'll they'll look at each other. It's like oh wow, I don't know who has the advantage here. Right. Yeah, I don't know who is uh you know more dangerous. And these guys are both legitimate guys. Like Lashley's like sixteen and one in MMA. Now I haven't seen all the fights, but I'm just gonna presume that if you sixteen and one in professional MMA, you can rough somebody up. Right. Cause uh, hey, I don't know if those dudes not in the UFC are more or less dangerous. Cause uh, hey. I'm not getting punched in the face for two hundred dollars or whatever. Like I'm just saying, I don't know if it's two hundred dollars, but it ain't a lot of money in Bellator, right? Let's say it's three thousand. Look, man, you telling me that somebody like as big as Lashley might have to hit me in the face? No, no, no. Ten thousand dollars ain't enough. No, no, no. That won't pay for the jaw surgery. Nah, they they gotta they gotta they that's just that's not that's not gonna work. Whoa, that's won't cover. Work. I don't think that'll cover the jaw surgery, sir. Right, uh, no. Mm-hmm. Nope. I might need a whole new set of teeth after this thing. Uh, <laughs> right, no, nah, that's not gonna fly. Good yeah, buddy. So, yeah, that's okay. But yeah, Bobby Lashley's there. Uh, the authors of Pain made their debut on the main roster. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh. They look good. They beat Slater and Rhino. Uh, they turned their back on a manager, Paul Ellerick. Uh, right. Now, there's speculation that that happened because Paul probably didn't want to do the travel that's going to be associated with the main roster as opposed to just working out at NXT. Uh, Paul says, no, nah, he liked to travel. So, I don't know. I don't know what the, what the purpose of the storyline of them getting rid of Paul Ellerick. Uh, I don't know if Paul wanted to have that run or not. But, you know. Right. Either way, um, I'm just going down to make sure I get all the high points. Um, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens showed up on Raw, which we knew was going to happen because they lost. Like, they made a point to say that they didn't have a job on SmackDown. Right. I thought they were going to show up on Raw and beat up uh, Kurt Angle. Like, I thought Stephanie and Triple H was going to have to beat down Kurt Angle to get a job on Raw. But you know, that would have been, but I'm glad that, that that's not the spin they took with it. No, they did. I'm glad. That, I'm, <sighs> I, I'm so glad they showed up begging. Like I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that. Yeah. I am because um, it showed a moment of vulnerability for two people that were just being heinous, yes. and it's awesome. Because Kurt was like, "Yeah, TNA hiring." <laughs> Oh which a mention of TNA, which it's not TNA anymore. They don't even exist because it's right. Impact Wrestling. But yeah, he said that, and that had people going crazy on the internet. Uh, Impact decided, hey man, we're gonna use the mileage. They would start tweeting out all kinds of pictures <laughs> and like, hey, we we can use that pub. But uh, yeah, because. I wonder if that TNA mention was something subtle because something they might try to do later on and create a faction or something because they got so many old right, TNA right. guys. They could get it cracking. Uh, the Sammy KO match ended in a no contest because they basically, Kurt gave them a match and one of them could get a job. And man, friends turned on each other quick because Kevin was like, hey man, I got oh kids. Boy, what? But uh, that was in that rain destroying each other. I right. God damn. Match ended in a no contest. Um, we'll see how they get. They'll get along on a superstar shake up next week. Um, Jeff Hardy made his return to Raw. Uh, Miss Taraj was going to gang up on Rollins and Baylor, and uh, Jeff wasn't having it. Which led to a main event match, which is a six man match. And the good guys won. Right, right. Um why not you Keish, what do you think of the new Finn Baylor shirt and the new movement that he is? I want one. <laughs> I 
just that, like, Keith, come on, man. You know, I, I want one. What do you mean? Like, I want one. I yeah. hear you talking when he, when he wore it at WrestleMania. Matter of fact, because I, uh, I follow, I was on uh, Tumblr one day, and I seen that I had already seen that logo, right? Right. And I thought that, uh, like, a fan had made that up. I was right. like, oh, you know. I said, oh, this is cute. You know, I like this. But then I seen it on his Instagram, and I was like, oh, this is for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I already thought it was awesome before that. But now that I see, like, this was him putting this out there, I was and even more of a fan. Like, I was like, oh, yeah. Then when WrestleMania happened and he came out, I was, it was it. I want one of those shirts. Yeah, like, no. I'm not playing. No, I thought the WrestleMania interest was what really... Like put it over the top because it was like, oh wow! Like there's no doubt because right. in the beginning it's like you just see the logo and it's like, oh, it's a rainbow. Okay, not a big deal. WWF like colors. Don't think that the Bob was like, no, this guy's making a statement about LGBTQ right. rights and people, and he represented those people at WrestleMania on the biggest stage. He used his platform and he, you know, had a message. Right. And I, I will always be for that. Um. So yeah, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Just something we could talk about. But uh, I don't think there's anything major left for route. Like I said, Paige announced her retirement from the ring competition, which we all kind of knew for a while. Um, we'll see what happens with KO and Sami Zayn. Um, so I guess we'll move on to SmackDown. So uh, we have to. That being said. Page is now the new uh, GM of SmackDown since Daniel Bryan has returned to the in-ring competition full time. Yeah, he's uh, like, oh no, I can wrestle now. That's all I'm gonna do. No, thank you. I don't want this. <laughs> like he really wasn't for the GM gig in the first place. So now that he can get it, like, now he's back in the ring. He's like, oh, I'm done with this. I was for. I, I actually, Keith, I'm all for it. Like I was like, yeah, all right, Daniel. Like I'm. But Paige being GM is going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting because I want to see what kind of dynamic that they're going to place with her and Shane. Like, this is this is going to be fun to watch, I have to hmm. honestly say. Yeah. And, I mean, Paige, I guess she got high hopes of actually getting back into the ring. Um, right. You know, they said she talked to Ed, she talked to Daniel Bryan, and, you know, I, I, I'm proud. I hope she, she gets where she, you know... Because I felt bad. Well, her have to retire, man. You know, Paige's like 25. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she's, she's still, like, early in, in just all of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Brandon, she's been wrestling for years, but at the same time, she's 25. You know what I'm saying? Like, she ain't nowhere near close to the, the years that you would think, you know, that she would need to retire and all that kind of stuff. Like, no. Like, she, <sighs> she's like... It's it's unfortunate, you know what I'm saying. It's right. very unfortunate. Um, so that happened. Um, also on the show. Um, I like the Renee Young trying to interview Sensei Nakamura, and Nakamura was like, "Yeah, he was talking and he doing his thing," and then Renee was like, "Just be a little disingenuous." And then she asked him another question. He was like, "I don't speak any English." <laughs> Oh, I was bugging. And it was, it's funny because, it, it's funny on so many levels because if you know foreign people of color, especially, then they would do that all the time on your ass. Right. They, they're like, I'm tired of dealing with this dumb American. I, you know what? I don't speak any English. I don't speak any English. <laughs> right. And people just go fall back. They'd be like, nope. But uh, I like that. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, the Usos defeat the New Day. So they will challenge uh, the Bludger Brothers at the Greatest Royal Rumble every event. The question would be why mm-hmm. the Usos have to wrestle the New Day when they were already, uh, they would have a champion right. uh, rematch exactly. clause. Right. Just keep your storyline no consistent. Sense. Um, and they Naomi defeats Natalia. In a singles match. Um, so she, Naomi's going to be in a role. Let's see what happens with that. 
Uh, Charlotte got to meet SmackDown's newest additions as the iconic uh, duo the showed up. The Iconics. The Iconics. What Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. And uh, they laid out their names right. <laughs> yeah, they laid out one Charlotte Flair. Uh, yeah. And Carmella cashed in. It was like, oh shit. Yeah. And I thought she was gonna lose the cash here because it, it, it took a long time, and Charlotte was getting up, and I was like, right. oh, she gonna mess around and get pinned. But no, Carmella got it cashed in. And uh, she is our new women's champion of SmackDown, and I guess they, yeah, they had to get rid of the briefcase. You know what I mean? I can't stand Carmella, but they had to. She had that briefcase for us. Shit, money in the bank gonna be around the corner in a minute. Like they yeah. had to get rid of the briefcase, but I was like, man, like for real, Charlotte. But yeah. what I was reading. What I had been reading in the note sheets, I think, for like some weeks now, was that it was projected that Carmella was going to lose when she cashed in, like yeah. um, Baron Corbin. No, so, that was a that was a conversation, right? That she was going to lose, and I mean, they tipped at you right. with her losing a couple of times. Uh, the thing is with Carmella, I think the way that this will be positioned is that uh, she. Uh, she'll hold on to that belt. I think Charlotte's going back to Raw. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And, um, and then we'll see what happens next. But I think Charlotte's gonna go back to Raw, and then they'll reshuffle that way. Only thing that might keep yeah. her on SmackDown is that Ronda Rousey's on Raw, and they may not want to do that right away. Right. Um, we'll see. We'll see yeah. what happens. Randy Orton defeats Bobby Roode and Rusev to challenge for the United States Championship with Jinder Mahal at Backlash. Uh, first of all, that makes me wonder, so is the United States title not going to be on the line in the World Rays or a Rumble? Also, Randy Orton had a rematch clause. Why did he have to challenge two other people to become number one contender? What, what, what is this new trend? So, we're just not honoring rematch clauses now? Like, oh, well... Yeah, we know you got a rematch clause, but you still need to fight for your opportunity. Like, what what sense does that make? Like, really? My question is, if he lost a match, will he still get to use his rematch clause? Like, I just need to know. Like, y'all y'all don't mention that part. Like, what the fuck? Like, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm really confused by all of this, but yeah. whatever. So that happened. Uh, AJ Styles, uh, Russell, Daniel Bryan, because Paige made that. Blockbuster match at the beginning of the show. Right. I thought they had a good match before she say came in and messed everything up. Yeah, their match was going awesomely. And then that just... I was like, why? Like, what the hell? But it it, it perpetuates the feud between Shinsei and uh, AJ, right? And right. what it does, Daniel didn't have to win and AJ didn't have to lose. Because the thing is... Yeah, true. It just Daniel just need to look good. Now, what's next for Daniel? I don't know. Uh, what's next for AJ and Shit say? Hey, man, the title's still on the line, right? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that'll be it. Um, and that was our fast forward microwave to make the uh, Raw Respect out. Uh, next week, we will uh, talk about some stuff. Uh... Sometimes I don't know how we'll do it because I don't know if I'm. I mean, we might recap Raw and SmackDown during the middle of the week, and then next week be the big preview of the big thing. So, right. Without that, either way it go. Uh, it's been two hours. We appreciate y'all listening, and we will be back we love you. sooner than later. Uh, have a good week. Peace. Bye. Oh no, I'm all over the place. Here we go.